right there. Show some good symmetry while still keeping it aesthetic with the arch. Got that pump? Yeah, try to. First though. Oh, 76. Let's get that pricey gas. Good to see you. Yeah, it's season. Okay, this is Yo, what up, dude? Hey, <laughs> brother, how's it nice going, man? You, brother. Got my post workout protein shake, my aminos, and carbs. I drink carbs while I work out certain days, depending on what the body part is. Got some wrist wraps for Maddie. My amino caps for during. Then you gotta have your belt. Belt. So we got this ThreadX belt. Look at that cheese, that's so good. That's, that's pretty, huh? Oh, no one's tough when face with time. We waste our lives lying away fine. We step on nights to pass that time. Yeah, so here's that. Awesome. Oh, thank you. you. Can take, I only have one of these, but then I have some you got Single pack? Yeah, what do you guys like? Uh, uh, vanilla, joint? peppermint, strawberry, or uh, grapefruit? You need that strawberry, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, what do you want? I'll do uh, grapefruit. So, yeah, it's cool. Awesome, awesome man. Bro. Yeah, it's IFBB wheelchair pro. So, he's going to be doing the Europa in Dallas, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm Europa probably about 15 weeks out. 15 weeks? Okay. 15 weeks out. Okay. 15 weeks out. Yeah, man, you're looking yeah. good, man. Yeah, yeah you're so looking. I'm just trying to get there. I like to start early so I, can, I have room to work once. Oh, 100%, man. Get that conditioning yeah. down early. Suffered a car accident in 2005. Spinal cord injury, T12 paraplegic, for allowing bodybuilding to be my saving grace. Adelfo Sarami Jr. It's a science. Mm -hmm. It's actually trying to find what fits best for your body because you can't cookie cutter a peak. Right. And I've tried it multiple times with clients and we always get there, but sometimes you're suboptimally peaking someone just because you haven't studied their body in depth mm -hmm. enough. And so I think that's the biggest thing is understanding through trial and error what works best for you. Like when I did the army in 2017, I did a rapid uh, rapid carb load where I loaded everything at night. Okay. On Friday night and then my water, potassium, sodium, everything. Like I use a two to one ratio of sodium. Two to potassium. Yeah, potassium. Okay. So if my sodium for that day was 15, it'd be under like my potassium. But I, hit, I nailed everything right. The following day, I woke up nice, dry, everything. Right, right, right. Following year, try to do the same thing. Try to do the is actually fat soluble. Exactly. Right, right. So like people that make water soluble CBD, I'm pretty sure that like that's it, you know inaccurate way to actually try to absorb it through water. Exactly. But you I'm rep now. I'm rep. <laughs> and G7X. It's really easy if you're gonna film yourself at the gym. <laughs> Well, Olympia ought to send out a care package. So I got a bunch of wrist wraps to hand them out. Some Matty Ice Man. This helps stabilize the wrist, especially with heavy triceps and heavy shoulders and presses. It makes sure that your wrist doesn't like snap backwards or forwards. Oh, yeah. It kind of just provides stability. Straight how to do a proper dumbbell lateral raise. I see people doing the straight arm. Okay, that's one variation. Activates the trap more. I see a lot of people doing this. Okay, and what this is gonna do, your radiobrachialis, like right here, your forearm muscle, you're kind of using that more than you're activating your deltoid. So what we're trying to do is drive through the elbow and kind of just like shrug, like this, holding the dumbbell in your hands. So that way your wrist stays below your elbow and your elbow is in line with your shoulder. And that's gonna get the maximal contraction of the medial deltoid head, right? You got a wire attached to your elbow that's pulling it up. There that's go. it. Just pull see this. Right here. You get fancy. Okay, give me my hand slightly below my elbows. There's my medial delt my head. I can get that deeper muscle activation. That's how you body move. Activate the muscle. We don't care about how much weight we move. We care about moving the weight and stimulating the muscle. Moving the weight and stimulating the muscle. That's what it's all about. Now, Walker, how many weeks out are we? Four weeks out. Oh, no one's tired when faced with time. 
We waste our lives lying with fame. Actually looking like I work out now. It's bodybuilding, man. <laughs> Change every 10 minutes. Better for the money. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Maddie and me prepped together for the Cal, and we had a game plan which he executed. I didn't do so well at. He was going to win the classic bodybuilding sword for Mr. California. I was going to win the men's physique sword, and everything actually went well in the morning. I got a five, which is a really good score. Maddie won his class. At night, we came back. He got both his swords. Became Mr. California, and he was standing backstage waiting for me. And that's just not how it went down. I spilled a little bit, I had too many carbs, my abs washed out, and you know, that's how I have to eat it until this, this year. Explain what spilled means. Your body, your muscles have so much glycogen storage. That means that's where they're storing the carbs in the muscle. So, you, will, you don't really know how many carbs your body can store on any given day. You're basically guessing through past experimentation, you know basically around how many carbs your body can take, but if you get, you know, as Maddie says, even 10 grams too many, you spill. The carbs can't go inside the muscle to make you look fuller. They have to find another place to go, and usually they end up going between the skin and the muscle. You want to elaborate? Yeah, man. In a sport where we want to push our bodies to the limit, sometimes it can get misconstrued that more is better. So we want more carbs and we want more reps. Sometimes you need more rest. Sometimes you need to pull back a little bit. And it's like, why risk looking 30% worse just to be 10% better? So I think I've taken the conservative approach when it comes to my peaks, and we want to play it safe. Because if you spill over, you're just not going to win anything. So it's better to come a little flat, more conditioned, more shredded and peeled, and win in that conditioning factor, than to try to push your muscle bellies to be as full as you can possibly be, and risk spilling over. You know, he's a veteran competitor, and he knows that the only way to get truly peeled is to suffer. And I told him the other day, if you don't have anything on the line, if they don't have anything to risk, if they're not representing their family, if they didn't get broken up with a girlfriend, right, you have to have something that drives you to the brink of exhaustion and fatigue. And that's where you really get peeled. Is having a temptation late at night, waking up where you're literally starving, can you refrain from those temptations? Can you truly bring out that conditioning? I think last year, the answer was, he kind of cruised into the shows eating a lot. The year before, he was peeled. So this year, it's time to suffer. It's time to bring out our best. That's what you gotta do. That's right, that's what we gotta do. Here we go. As a survival mechanism, our, our body doesn't want to be lean. If you look at, you say back in the Stone Ages, the caveman, you know, when, you know, the hunter-gatherer days when they made their hunt, you know, if someone like me, Maddie, or Walker would be walking around in the Stone Ages, we'd probably die like within the next week because we don't have enough body fat to protect ourselves. The people who had enough body fat were able to survive, you know, so your body doesn't know that you're preparing for a bodybuilding contest or you're trying to get shredded for the summer. All it knows is like, oh shit, he's, he's starving. So let's make these ad metabolic adaptations. You know, what it does is when your body's going to adjust, it's pretty much gonna slow your metabolism down, do everything to prevent you from losing any more weight. So I try to eat as much calories as I can and then we're, you know, say a little above maintenance, then gradually. But ideally, you wanna lose maybe, a, you know, about, Depending how lean you are, one to two pounds a week would be your gauge. If you're leaner, maybe 0.5 pounds a week, you know, and then just slowly go from there because now you're laddering down. You're giving your body time to adjust, adjust, adjust rather than, oh shit, 1,200 calories. Hell yeah. You gotta eat when you're not hungry. That's how we grow. Eat when you're not hungry. <laughs> That's how you get those pumpkin bells home. That is. You gotta eat when you're not hungry. Those don't even look real, man. A little bit of fish, a little salad, um, and we got a little bit of rice. So a nice balanced meal here for a post-workout, enough to replenish my muscles after uh, you know exerting them. Yeah, man. All right, guys, that's it for episode three. 
Join us next week, episode four. We're just finishing up right now. We're gonna head back up to Santa Monica. Probably be around Gold's Gym next week. Stay tuned.